usually don't have to spend a lot of draft capital to put yourself in a position to hit on a rookie wide receiver or two. Just look at Justin Jefferson from last year, who was going off the board as the wide receiver 50, or Chase Claypool, or even better, Terry McLaurin back in 2019, who went undrafted in almost every league as a rookie. Some you'll need to draft much earlier than others, but in many cases, they'll be sitting there in the last round of your draft. I'm Dave Lochran with AwesomeMode.com, highlighting five rookie wide receivers that you should be keeping an eye on as we draw closer to our drafts. Hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and let's dive into it. Rashad Bateman is one of the most difficult rookie wide receivers to project for 2021 and even beyond. He landed on a Baltimore team that threw the football a league low 45% of the time last season and averaged the dismal 172 passing yards per game. Maybe this is because the Ravens had a dearth of capable receiving options, or maybe it was because Greg Roman absolutely hates to throw the football. There might be some hope, though, as Roman stated that he's looking to expand the playbook and take advantage of teams selling out to stop Lamar Jackson, which could naturally lead to an expanded role for Bateman in his rookie season. This could all be wishful thinking, but the path still has been clear for Bateman to see a large majority of snaps as a rookie. A high target share on a low passing volume team can still offer a ton of value, but the question of whether or not that target share will be there and whether or not Baltimore will stop running the football more than 55% of the time is cause for concern in redraft leagues. Ultimately, Bateman has the route running skills and versatility to function as Baltimore's number one receiver. But this is still Baltimore we're talking about, where no receiver has finished with 800 yards in the Lamar Jackson era. He's a late first round dynasty pick and a late round flyer in redraft leagues with upside if Roman adopts a more balanced attack. Rondell Moore might not be who you expected to see at number four, but this kid is just exciting. At only 5'7", some may say 5'9", you might think Moore has no future in the NFL. You'd be wrong. The diminutive receiver has lightning fast speed, can jump out of the stadium, and has an uncanny ability to bounce off defenders like a pinball. Moore could become the number two receiver in Arizona sooner than later. Christian Kirk finished second in receiving with only 48 receptions and 621 yards last season, followed by Dan Arnold and now free agent Larry Fitzgerald. Yes, the Cardinals added A.J. Green, but if his struggles are anything like they were in 2020, Cliff Kingsbury will be desperate for production at the position behind DeAndre Hopkins. Moore is a clearly speculative play who you shouldn't be targeting until later in drafts, but the upside here is significant. He's ungodly strong for his size, is absurdly proficient after the catch where he racked up 71% of his total yards at Purdue, and lands on a Cardinals team that played at the league's second fastest pace last season. Consider more a late round redraft target with breakout potential and a late first round selection in rookie drafts. Jalen Waddell has the skill to make a lasting impression in this league, but it might not begin until next season. This is why I'm ranking him a distant third for redraft leagues behind the next two players on our list, despite being drafted sixth overall by the Miami Dolphins. Now, it's entirely possible that Waddle begins the season as the Dolphins' number four receiving option behind Devontae Parker, Will Fuller, and Mike Gusecki. And if Tua Tagovailoa doesn't take a significant step forward in year two, Waddle could be in for a tough rookie campaign. Waddle should be Miami's starting slot receiver, though, and has unmatched speed and explosiveness that could lead to some huge games in his rookie season. But unless Fuller and or Parker miss time, he'll be fighting for targets every week and very likely won't be at the top of the pecking order early on. I would absolutely avoid reaching for Waddle if the first round wide receiver hype drives up his ADP, but there should be some interest in best ball leagues with his potential to have some huge weeks as a rookie. And while it's entirely speculative, there's been a lot of rumors swirling around the Deshaun Watson trade to the Dolphins that could send Tagovailoa to the Texans. If that happens, we're upgrading every single pass catcher on Miami's roster, including Waddle. Devontae Smith was the first wide receiver to win the Heisman Trophy since 1991, and only the fourth at his position to ever earn those honors. He finished his 2020 campaign at Alabama with 117 receptions, 1,856 yards, and 23 touchdowns with 15.9 yards per reception, leading all FBS players in those categories. The biggest knock on Smith coming into the draft was his size. At six foot flat and only 170 pounds, there were concerns that he would struggle to stay healthy or be able to get off the line against bigger, more physical corners in the NFL. While that might be true, Smith is an absolute technician when it comes to route running and has incredible hands. He can make adjustments on bad balls and is no slouch after the catch either. Think about this. In 2019, when Alabama had Jerry Judy, Henry Ruggs, and Jalen Waddell, 
all who were top 15 draft picks over the last two years. It was Smith who led the team in receiving yards and touchdowns. Now he comes to Philadelphia where they have whiffed on wide receiver picks constantly for what feels like decades. Smith could immediately slide in as the Eagles' number one receiving option and reunite with his former teammate, Jalen Hurts. And while Hurts completed only 52% of his passes in four starts, he wasn't exactly working with a star-studded cast of receivers. And he did attempt the six most deep balls over that span. I'll definitely be taking shots on Smith in the later rounds of redraft leagues and in best ball, where you can pair him with Hurts and Jalen Rager at a relatively cheap cost. Smith is an easy mid-first round pick in dynasty rookie drafts as well. There wasn't much to say about Nico Collins' college resume, but he's a big-bodied receiver who can outmuscle defenders, win one-on-one matchups, and average nearly 20 yards per reception in his best year at Michigan. Collins has a mess of a quarterback situation he'll be walking into with the Texans, but behind Brandon Cooks, Houston doesn't have a legitimate wide receiver too. There's an opening for Collins to be an immediate producer if he can show up this summer. Terrace Marshall Jr. could make an immediate impact in Carolina too now that Curtis Samuel took a job in Washington. Don't expect him to take over in the slot, but the possibility of a significant enough workload to be fantasy relevant early on is real, especially after the Panthers used a second round pick to get him on the roster. Of course, all of this depends on whether or not Sam Darnold improves under the tutelage of Joe Brady or if he continues to underwhelm. No quarterback attempted more passes per game than Joe Burrow last season in the 10 that he played, and fewer defenses were as bad as the Bengals. This should bode extremely well for Jamar Chase, who also reunites with his college quarterback on a team that will be forced to throw at a high clip again. A.J. Green was wildly disappointing in his return from a lost season, but he was still second in targets through 10 games with Burrow under center, and his departure will allow, will allow for Chase to thrive alongside Tyler Boyd and T. Higgins. Usually there would be more concern about a rookie ride receiver joining a team that already has several strong players at his position, but the passing volume should mitigate any of those concerns. Plus, Chase is an NFL-ready pass catcher with all of the tools to dominate the league for a long time. In 2019, he and Burrow hooked up for 1,780 yards and 20 scores on 84 receptions, with an absurd 20.2 yards per reception. And Chase managed all of this production with Justin Jefferson on the roster. Jefferson just broke the NFL all-time rookie receiving yards record in 2020. So it gives you an idea of what we can expect from Jamar Chase in his rookie season and going forward. As long as the Bengals offensive line can keep Joe Burrow alive, Chase is going to make an impact right away. He's a top two pick in rookie drafts, and I definitely wouldn't hesitate to draft him in the middle rounds of redraft leagues, given the expected pass heavy approach the Bengals will be forced to take again in 2021. Thanks for watching and be sure to check out awesome for all of your fantasy football needs. See you back here on the next one.